Good morning, peoples, here from Baira Alta in Portugal. Hope you're doing good out there. And once again, we are going to do, like in the previous one, a bit of a historic video and mix in the glorious mountains of Portugal in Serra da Estrela. And to kick off a little bit of history today, we're here at a dolmen. The dolmen of Ante do Cortiço. Hey, I didn't have that in my head yet. And these structures here, built in a Neolithic period, about 4,000 years ago, were apparently, at least they think, used maybe as burial mounds, burial locations. And uh, there have been archeological findings here of pottery, uh, spearheads. Those are the typical items that they find at these things. And there's a multitude of them actually in the region, uh, also across the border in, uh, in Spain. Just nearby, it can go to another one. It tends to be these vertical rocks with a nice big flat rock on top. Now, from what I understand, this place was not like this anymore as they tend to be, but have been reconstructed, restored, and this one already multiple times over the past, I don't know, 50 years or longer. But this one here is in great condition and is our starting point before we step on the girl on Atlas here. <sighs> Flawless and head out into the mountains, the tallest mountains in Portugal, in Serra da Estrela, where you can actually do some skiing. So another nice, nice day. And hopefully these clouds won't turn into rain clouds. So let's get going. Aight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. So remember when we just got to Portugal? And it was rainy. Well, today we're going to enter those magnificent mountains. Again, one of those places where I always have wanted to go look at that. I've been there as a kid. I don't remember anything, but I've always wanted to ride there. I know I say that a lot in Portugal, but there, it's like going to the Alps or the Pyrenees or the Carpates of Portugal. Let's go. I think we just entered Forns. The all good. And now this whole region is full of what they call historic villages. And they have historic importance here because, as I explained in previous videos, the north, which kind of started out here back then, but that was Proto Portugal, the first Portuguese kingdom, or before it even was the kingdom, when it was. Uh, Galicia, that identity started to form here. And it was in these towns. And because it's so near to Spain, castles were built all over the place. And also because it was that border region, a lot went down, and I'm talking after the Reconquista, after it was taken from the Moors, of course, otherwise Portugal would not have formed. But after that formed, came the hundreds of years of on and off battles with Spain, or Leon before Spain was Spain, and later in the Napoleonic Wars. They came through these regions, so a lot of important battles happened all over the place. It kept Portugal, Portugal, all the results of those battles. <laughs> Otherwise, Portugal maybe wouldn't be so much Portugal. Who knows? Pedro can't say. What you see a lot today is going for all these small villages with all the granite, old granite houses and churches. Middle age Portugal. I think that's an aspect that people aren't too familiar with with this country. How long ago it was founded. So therefore there's a lot of history. These kind of places in the mountains, right? These villages, people tend to think of what? Italy, France, you know, Burgundy, Spain, but Portugal definitely also belongs on that list. And speaking of that history, we are almost in 
Beira Linares. No, Linares da Beira. And there is Linares Castle, which used to be of the utmost importance while I pay attention to the road in the battle against the Spanish, the border defense, the early Portuguese borders, because those lay a lot closer back then. Oh no! All right. <laughs> I took the long way around. So you people, <laughs> you wonder sometimes, bad job, you blink a mic, turn it off, it's driving me insane. When's it happening? When I'm usually telling my story, right? Using my hands. It's a surprise I got both hands on the steering, right? At all, usually, when I'm telling a story. So I'm distracted and I just didn't look at the GPS and coming in, in, in into town here while I was telling the story. But that's all right, because you can see a little bit more of this town of the old kingdom of Portugal importance. Oh no, dead end. O grande navegador Mota. Hey, even the great navigators sometimes had to turn around. Right, left. But here, look at this. Again, these granite houses. But here, is where this country shares the history with my second homeland, the Netherlands. Because before they had to defend against the Spaniolen. Well, the Netherlands used to be pretty much a, a colony of Spain, the Habsburgs. Before they became independent, it was a struggle against Spain. Portugal had an even longer struggle with Spain because they were their bloody neighbor and the ever-growing Spain absorbing the larger kingdoms, the smaller kingdoms, unifying. Ooh, look at this. Lovely, eh? They came more and more hungry for land. And Portugal, they always looked at Portugal, you know, complete the Iberian achievement. And the Castle of Linares helped the defense against us Spaniolos, Spaniols. Because back then, you couldn't trust them. It's okay, it's okay, Spain bros now. But back then, no way, Jose. Look at this. Now, this is an old castle, as I like to say in my best of historic poetry. Let's go have a look. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, shit. <laughs> Almost dropped in there. Too hyped, too hyped. All right, let's go check out the castle of Linares da Beira. Built here, just boom on these rocks like you see them all over the place and you see we're right on the edge of Serra da Estrela before we go enter it we enter the fort we got the first gate wow look at this it's been built and expanded over I don't know about 300 years and was probably built in the 10th or 11th century and uh, the reason why it ended up here, or pretty much the town in itself, is because a Roman road ran by here, nearby. And that road went from Guarda to uh, Coimbra, where we recently were. So it became a little commerce node here. Here's the big bathtub. See, it's really built on these rocks here, on top of the hill. So, rudimentary, right? So basic, like I was saying while I was riding, became an important defensive point for a while because Castilla, Leon, and later Spain, they were always looking westward, you know? with lustful eyes towards Portugal and Spain would go like mmm that looks so good but you know Portugal had a bite mm -mm. she wouldn't be taken easily like the Spanish always fought these defenses here help with that here on the edge of the Serra da Estrela which we will be entering shortly you know what I haven't had a proper uh, breakfast still and it's almost lunchtime so I think I'm going to do that here in Linares this is very nice in Portugal it's full of them just water
just taps everywhere with spring water fountains. It's great. From what I understood, if you can't drink it, there is a sign, but I've rarely seen that. Vamos comer! Beleza! What's that? I think I saw a place to eat there, but let's take it in a little bit. Yeah, this is a well-maintained... Whoa, what's going on here? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's why the ladies were probably looking at me like, what's he doing? That's a dead end. Let's look in another town. That place was uh, too fancy for what I'm trying to do here. These are great. Hey, look at the, these steep uh, roads here. Imagine them all nice and wet. But you can barely see it. GoPro is terrible at showing you angles. Let's see if here in Prados you can find a place to eat. What was that? Aqui sim um lugarzinho onde se pode comer assim um prego. Já foi ali de pouco? Não, agora vou entrar para a serra. Para a serra? Sim, para a serra. Sim, em direção do guarda? Sim. Sim? Vou chegar ali ao campo de porta para cima. Como é que chama-se? Vido Monte. Vido Monte. Então. Acho que abriu logo um restaurante. Está bem. É. Obrigado. Nada. Oh, we found our way out. should be able to find some food. The petrol station. So I've heard. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Hope you're not too thirsty, Atlas. Oh, tá bom, senhor. Eu eu encho. Você quer encher? Senhora, tá, tá bem, pronto. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Olha, o snack bar tá aberto. Então, bom, boa. Mas é qualquer? É pá, 95. Está mais frio aqui neste lado, é? E vai ficar assim hoje? Hoje vai. Vai. Let's get some food. Queijinho aqui é da. É o queijinho da. Da serra. Da serra. Queijinho da serra com presunto. With presunto. It's too furry now. Days getting away from us, man. Riding in the winter is the hardest time wise, time management wise. It'll be getting dark at quarter to five. But so far already some really nice rides. But we need to go further south to really hit the mountains. I'm not sure I can complete that big route I wanted to do today, but let's get at least one pass or two passes in, eh? Oh man. Maybe you guys already noticed it earlier than I did, but I just noticed now that brownie's gone. So someone took brownie, or he fell out, little doggo. Oh, that sucks. What's up, brownie? Oh. 
How you doing, Brownie? You look a bit terrified from there. All right, after a bom pãozinho, should nourish us through the mountains. And right now, we're on our way to some squiggly roads that lead to, if I'm saying it correctly, a place in the mountains called Manteigas. It literally means butters as in plural of butter and you know the character from South Park butters so let's go to butters Queenstown vibe, probably a uh, winter sport town, the skiing resorts being nearby uh, probably. Oh lordy, I already see where this is going. So some damp and moisty corners. Wee wee wee, see, the map never, <coughs> pardon me, the map never lies. Bulldog, they're crazy with that. Whoa, Pepe! See that? I already noticed that people on the street. That was why I wasn't taking it too uh, too hard. But this, whew, this is nice in it. U turn. Japan narrow but it's getting close and also it sticks to the surface so not so the surface isn't just straight kind of goes all around like this and that's the best so I tell you you know a Stelvio Pass in Italy that's all very nice beautiful view oh you look down at that it's brilliant but this this is really fun to ride. If you would ask me for a ride, and I could choose, I would choose here. Keep you cool, Petra. Don't get too excited. <laughs> I'm feeling things. I'm feeling things. This is mad. 
magical, man. This is like the Ardennes in the mountains, this section here. Oh, I love this. Oh, what a beauty. It's uh, getting a lot colder now here, higher up and in the fog. There's a lot more wet patches. Oh, this is magical. Oh, you know what? And so many off-road. Shall I take that one? Instead of the road? I know how this looks now. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. There's a lot of leaves on that dirt road. I just saw that stop sign. Slip and slide. Let's not regret this. It's not that this is hard, but yeah, I'm one slippy. I got like sumo tires on the back. So I got a slippy girl. Oh, load it. two days ago <laughs> no yesterday could have used it i still have my blinker on <laughs> hilarious yeah my front wheel just give it a little bit of angle and she's gone Most roadie tire I've ever had. <laughs> Going up. Man, knowing the roads like this, I'd rather even take like the Shinko like I have on Alp. But I bought the K60 Scout. I used to have them on my uh, as my first 50/50 off-road tires when I went to Mongolia and whatnot. They were great. When I did Mongolia with that. Oh shit! No, no, it feels good. So swervy that it almost felt like a flat. Um, and now we're back without a trace. But uh, since I'm going to be riding still a lot of asphalt, I'd rather have the Scout. And also it's good in the rain. Whoa, spooky! Oh, just look at this. You gotta love it. Well, look at that. You know what? Not by any means a great rider. Myself, but I'm comfortable, you know, doing things. And I think all this riding that I've done prepared me to really enjoy even more all this, all these roads that were here all along in the country where I was born. And it allows me to dig in, to dig in more, to have a bit of, a bit of fun, as I call it. Cause this, uh, that was great. What's that? Who's burning what? Someone has made a fire, that's normal, right? See all the trees here, burned. Looks like someone made this. I know it takes a lot for a fire to go. Oh, it just it makes me a bit paranoid. I think this uh, someone's been making this, but Looks all under control, but Portugal burns like a mofo, man. Even if it's winter and wettish. Well, nothing uh, crazy should happen with that. So I made a lot of fires, there's no crazy wind, and later it will rain anyway, so. All right, let's keep going, that should be all right. Gotta love this mistiness. I think there's a lake somewhere up there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Looks 
like people that know what they're doing are on it. We have a little lonely house on the plateau. So I want to go to a smaller road now, direction of Subugairu. You know, I've recorded so much. I had bigger plans for today, but I've recorded so much of this magnificent place. And I want to try and get it in one video. But uh, I've had so much already. Well, a little bit more can't hurt. Anywhere in the world. I like these older roads the most. No pristine tarmac, sticks to the land. No barriers, no nothing. Just you and the road and whatever it throws at you. Well, as one can only conclude, after all that's been seen, and that's only a pinky of it, and that's that Santa the Stilla is a touring paradise with off-road options too. Oh man, every little town center surprises you still, right? The setup is the same, granite houses, these cobblestone roads, but still all uh, pretty unique and fun to ride through in their own way. Darth. minutes hour and a half of daylight left tops wow. look at the old rocks the old rock plateau the old fence it, I was just going to comment uh, compliment Portugal on the motorcycle friendly barriers with that solid bottom end so you don't break your spine on the pillars like on this one when you slide out when you wipe out ah this is what i want to see the water with a small barrier a small dam look at that altitude 1500 meters this must be another reservoir uh, Dam or something now. Lagoa Comprida, the long lagoon. That's You've been behaving lovely today, haven't you? Good girl. Oh yeah, it's windy and cool up here. In the uh, previous video, I talked about the people, right? The people, the Portuguese people, where they came from. Lusitania, the Lusitani. They were a tough nut to crack for the Romans because they could fall back into mountainous areas like this. Because like I said, the Portuguese originally were a mountain people. So they deployed uh, guerrilla tactics and they roamed in these mountains and in the hills and the lower mountains further up north but you know this looks like an old an old dam it's more like a massive artificial uh, lake they built this man because those stones, those are the old style stones, the granite. They work. Ooh, noise. By the way, I still wanted to show you guys. You've asked before what kind of tire I have on the front, which looks like a trail, a scorpion trail. 
right doesn't look too trailish to me this still looks uh or closer to a road uh, tire i used to have a different kind of scorpion on there which was a lot more uh off-road at least 20 percent and in the back a dunlop trail max but it's uh been worn down like I said, I got a new one coming. So riding this off-road has been like pretty much riding a slick. You still get some traction here. That's like a 20, 30 off-road tire. Uh, but what I, what I wanna say with this setup, it's not great for off-road, but still, there's uh, so much you can do. Sometimes people get hung up on, man, the perfect tire for off-road. You just gotta think that the more serious off-road tires is really to tackle the soft sand more and mud. But the kind of stuff that I was doing today, you can still do pretty much with a more road-oriented tire. Like I said, while knowing your limitations. So as we're leaving down the mountain, keep in low gear, we'll do. Take in the last massive view of the day on our way down. I hope you got better acquainted with the land of the Lusitani, the Lusitanian people and their highlands. There's still much to see here, but like I said earlier, there's only so much you can do with daylight and the winter is cruel that way with early darkness. But that means there's more to explore for future trips, and especially coming back with better off-road tires because I think there's a lot of tracks to discover here. I don't know how I'm going to put together this video. It's one of those I already know. Oh, there's too much footage. There's only so many twisties you can put in a video and I know there's a few of you that are like, put everything, more, more, more. Just look at this. It's been a great day. All right, people, take it easy out there and uh, I'll see all of you in the next video, all right? Ciao. Okay, hold up, hold up. Wow, look at the insane clouds coming over the crest. Oh man. What if I don't finish the video yet? Just a little bit more. Like I say, just never ending. There's only so much man can put into a video. Wow. Ciao, Jinchi. See you next time. <laughs>